Well, if you need more reasons why you shouldn't use Schoolbook RSA, here comes another video, Problem with Schoolbook RSA Part 2. So in this video, we're looking at the situation that the um, attacker is given two messages or two cyber attacks where the attacker knows that these two messages have some relationship. And I'm looking at the simplest case here that there is some linear relationship. So you could think of something like um, the message is some form which gets encrypted and there's a timestamp in there. They're sending the same information, but there is something which advances. You're seeing some hour field and some minute field or something, and you know how much time has passed. So you do know what the relationship between the first message and the second message is, namely there's some A and some B that you know, but you don't know what the message actually was. So you don't know what M1 is. Now we're going to go through one example of how to recover M1 from just these two cyber texts in the situation that they are linear related like this. Um, and that we'll need to look at a little bit of the algebraic transforms. So let's look at what C2 actually looks like. So C2, well, the message 2 was A times M1 plus B, and then the encryption is just taking the third power of this. So here we're in the situation of um, small exponent RSA again in the schoolbook method. So there's no padding and the exponent is just 3. And then we do the third power, so that gets us the, the first thing cubed plus 3 times the first thing squared plus times the second one, plus three times the first one times the second one squared, and then the last one cubed. And now these numbers, or all these relations, come a little bit out of my head, but just follow along as we do some little bit of brain gymnastics. So let's, let's define some constant A um, as this expression here. So we're taking the B that we know, that's from the algebraic relation out there, um, B times and then the second ciphertext plus 2a cubed times the first ciphertext minus b cubed. All right, why this? Well, let's expand this. So the b is still outside, and then I'm putting here all the expressions that we just developed for c2. So that starts with the a cubed and 1 cubed and ends with the red b cubed there. And then comes the 2a cubed c1. Now c1 is just m1 cubed. And so the two blue terms there are the same type, and the two of them sum up to 3 times a cubed, m1 cubed. And the two terms with a b cubed there, those cancel. So I put in a minus b cubed there so that the two b cubed terms just cancel out. And then if I look, uh, all of these terms have a 3. I mean, the, the 1 plus 2 gives us 3. And then there's a 3a squared, 1 squared b, and a 3a1, m, uh, a m1 squared. All of them also have an a, all of them have an m1, and there was a b in front of the parentheses anyway. Now, if you put all of this outside the parentheses, then what we're left with inside is just a squared m1 squared plus a m1 b and b squared. And now I'm doing a second expression, which is pretty much a sibling of the, the first one. Now I'm putting a on the outside. I'm again taking C2, but this time I'm taking minus A cubed C1. Well, we know already what that will do. It will cancel the blue term. And then plus 2B uh, B cubed. And so now the red terms will be B cubed plus 2B cubed, uh, cubed giving 3B cubed. And so again, we're going to see, well, Bs everywhere. The only term which didn't have Bs got canceled. We're going to see threes everywhere, and we have the a already outside. So the difference between these terms is that in this one, the terms don't necessarily have an m. And in general, the power of m is just one lower. And so we're getting that a is about the same as b, except for, well, a is b times m. So we can take we compute this A, which is all public information. We've seen the ciphertext, we're knowing A and B. We can compute B. We take the fraction and we're getting M. Yes, all of this is done mod N. Since I'm doing it symbolically here, all of these variables are supposed to be integers modular N. So when you're doing this attack, you do have to carry with you that all of these are computed modulo the public key.
All right. Yeah, we could do this also for larger e. So if you have like e being 5 or 17 or something, it gets a lot more messy. And I wouldn't want to put this on slides. But it's not impossible. So this is something where it's inconvenient. I wouldn't want to impose this on poor students. But it's nothing that would really, would really stop an attacker. And in more generality, if you can have some encryptions which are both related to a message. So we had here the simplest case that there are encryptions of ciphertext which are just linearly dependent. But if you can any, can get any function in these two ciphertexts such, let's call these um, functions or polynomials f of x and then the coefficients depend on c1, c2 and g of x, again, the other coefficients depend on c1, c2. And if there's such that the message would be a root of these. So we can see how we can turn the previous one into it. For instance, the um, second one, C1, would be just C1 is equal to M1 cubed. And the other one is a C2, which is this other algebraic relation. And so if you take that one minus C2, so this cubed minus C2, you're also getting zero. So if you have a common root, you can just compute the GCD of these polynomials. And now it's a GCD over polynomials, like not an integer GCD, but a polynomial GCD, and most likely X, uh, M is the only root of this. And you might get something times X, so then you want to ensure that it's made monic, so you have X minus M and not some factor in front of the X. And of course, finding this G and uh, F and G depends on the relationship that you have between these numbers, but um, it is definitely possible. And if you have more messages, then this gets easier. So I was giving you uh, an exercise on exercise sheet uh, five already, which is doing something similar with these algebraic relations. And you didn't even have this knowledge yet, but I was giving you three of those equations, not just two. And the more of these relations you have, the easier it gets to develop those. So with three relations, which are linearly dependent, and the simplest version that I gave is just increased by one, so A was one, it is actually possible to write this down without any of these uh, long algebraic manipulations. So get another reason if you need one more not to use school programming.